I want to talk today about John Clark. He was a brain. He was a skilled physician and an earnest student of the law and of theology. Um, and he was one of our heroes that helped to bring about religious freedom in this country of ours. I know Mr. Brady has spoken to you about Obadiah Holmes. Uh, he was arrested with uh, John Clark one time and and John Clark's uh, fine was paid, but they hung on to Obadiah Holmes, and he was in prison for a while, and they actually uh, beat him, again, here in this country, beat him, beat his back until the blood uh, spilled down and filled his boots, history tells us, uh, here in America, for standing for religious freedom. Um, so John Clark was one of his contemporaries and, well, and stood for many of the same things. Clark was born in England, and through, various, uh, through study and various circumstances, moved to Holland with other dissenters and eventually became a Baptist. And from Holland, he came to Massachusetts. Um, it was when um, Boston probably would have had about 1,000 people in it, um, uh, smaller. But he entered Massachusetts Bay Colony during a very dark time in American history. There, there was a controversy in full sway the question was, at that time, did salvation come through uh, works or by grace? One woman, Anne Hutchinson, um, she had just been excommunicated and cast out of the community. And I guess it wasn't like you just moved to a different place and start over. In many ways, a lot of times they would disarm you uh, and, and send you out without really means of, of taking care of yourself, almost a death sentence in those days. Um, but she was excommunicated and cast out of the community for standing for salvation by grace and for allowing people to assemble in her home to discuss such things. Uh, the judge told her, if you cannot keep your conscience, we will keep it for you. Uh, so Roger Williams had already fled Massachusetts and came to Rhode Island in 1636 in order to escape the various state religions that held sway in many of the other colonies. John Clark joined him, and they determined to found a colony there where anyone could practice their religion and would have the liberty to worship God according to the dictates of their conscience. But uh, they still needed official recognition from England to start this colony back in the 1600s. So in 1652, Clark and Williams traveled to England to secure a charter um, for Rhode Island. They were hoping this could be accomplished pretty quickly under Oliver Cromwell, but the project ended up taking 12 years. Uh, Williams returned home, uh, but Clark stayed in order to see it through, and see it through he did, which was uh, considered by many his greatest achievement. It was eventually, uh, it was Charles II who finally granted them their long-awaited charter. And I have a bit of it here. I'll read it. Our royal will and pleasure is that no person within said colony at any time hereafter shall be in any wise molested, punished, disquieted, or called in question for differences of opinion in matters of religion that do not actually disturb the civil peace of said colony but that all and any persons may from time to time and at all times hereafter freely and fully have and enjoy his and their own judgments and consciences in matters of religious concernments throughout the tract of land hereafter mentioned, they behaving themselves peacefully and quietly, not using this liberty to licentiousness and profaneness, not to civil injury or outward disturbances of others, any law, statute, or clause therein contained, usage or custom of this realm to the contrary, thereof in any wise not un, not, notwithstanding. <laughs> so uh, Charles II actually added this. Um, it is much on their hearts, if they may be permitted, to hold a lively experiment uh, it, was, it was considered by him an experiment. My, trust people with religious liberty? That's, that's interesting. This will be a lively experiment 
that a most flourishing civil state may stand and best be maintained, and that among our English subjects with full liberty in religious concernment. So this uh, experiment not only prospered there, but spread, praise the Lord, through our country. And, uh, and this experiment is still uh, uh, being fought for today in this country, but still standing, praise the Lord, at this time. Um, so after obtaining the charter from Charles II, Clark and Williams continued their labor together for the cause of religious liberty. Clark pastored the Baptist church in Newport until he died there in 1676. Interestingly enough, in his will, he set up a trust to be used for the relief of the poor or bringing up children unto learning. And uh, this is actually, you, you hear of different educational trust funds in this country. This, the one set up by John Clark, is considered to be the oldest educational trust fund in the United States. 